What's up guys, welcome to today's vlog. Today what we're gonna go over is a pretty fun haircut. I decided to go curly this time. I know that you guys request curly haircuts. I do have curly mannequins. I know you guys don't always like the mannequins, but to be honest, uh, it's so much easier to cut a mannequin, do the technique for you guys. Really these videos are all about technique, so what we're gonna go over today is a technique to cut a short kind of faux hawk on curly hair. Here is the end result. So you can see how it's nice and uh, clean and tight throughout the sides. You could transfer that into straight hair as well. So I just worked my way around. Um, I'm gonna show you guys that step by step. And then we built the weight up into the top. So I love the shape of the haircut. The inspiration came from this picture right here on sec. So the inspiration came from a different, a couple different pictures that I found on the internet with curly uh, hairstyles. So this is the first one. You can see there, that is pretty much how we built up the weight in this haircut. That was the overall shape. Obviously on this haircut, it's a lot tighter on the sides, but um, with using a mannequin, you go a little bit shorter, but it's easy to go tighter. So if you wanna go tighter with this haircut, you definitely can. The other one was this tapered curly haircut, which I really liked. So I got a little bit of inspiration from that as well. I'm gonna do that haircut in a later video because I really like the shape um, and it has a lot more length on the top. But for today, we're gonna do the curly faux hawk. Also, uh, to let you guys know, we're gonna do a giveaway in this video. So the giveaway is gonna come from whatever is in this box. So let's open it up and see. So we're gonna give away a Vibra Straight Iron to anybody that subscribes to this channel. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button below. Let's open up this beauty so you can see it paperwork out of there. Ooh, pretty. So here's the deal with the Vibrastrate iron. The Vibrastrate iron has vibrating plates on it. So what it does is that as it passes over the hair, it doesn't cause as much friction, which causes less heat damage. It also allows for a way smoother pass through um, with the iron. It also heats up very quick and it has a digital dial uh, so you can set the heat temperature on the professional version. This is a product that we sell on freesaloneducation.com and they wanted to give away one to you guys. So if you're interested in winning the Viber Straight Iron, then make sure you subscribe to our channel and also let me know in the comments below that you did subscribe or you are already subscribed and you could win this iron. Let's get started with our step-by-step -step video. Here we go. All right guys, so I'm gonna start off by parting the mannequin. We're gonna do a diagonal forward line coming from the back crown area down to just below the parietal ridge. So nice forward, diagonal forward feel. And then I'm gonna twist that up and clip it away. Almost like creating a more of a horseshoe shape on the head, but definitely lower than normal because I want some of that weight to play with later on. Then what I'm gonna do is create a triangle in the back coming off of the crown down to the high point of the occipital bone to create my last section. The scissor that I'm gonna use for today's haircut is the Pen Slim scissor from Mizutani. Uh, it's definitely a really great scissor for precision cutting. It's a nice skinny blade. I thought maybe you guys were getting bored of me telling you what scissors I was using all the time, but I didn't, so I left it out of the last video and turns out you asked me uh, which scissor I used in the last video. So I'll just keep doing that. Um, so this is the Pen Slim scissor from Mizutani, one of the brand new scissors uh, that they have. So um, I'm using my 339 comb. I start off by taking a small half inch vertical section in the back. That's gonna start my guideline. And then just like in the last video when we talked about traveling guides, this is a traveling guide all the way around the head. So my goal is not to really push weight anywhere. I want a nice clean feel, like I said, a seamless feel to this haircut. Um, you could see that there's a slight lower elevation up towards the occipital bone, but I'm trying to keep that more at a 90 degree feel so that we don't have a lot of weight buildup. The one thing with curly hair, it's definitely gonna be different than straight hair, is that right now I don't really need to try to create a shape. I don't need to shift my angles to create more elevation in this haircut because the curls do that for you. 
uh, on straight hair, you shift your finger angle so that you can build up a little extra weight to start to create a shape. That's the one thing that I really love about curly hair and why I think people are a little more scared of curly hair is because it starts to create its own shape uh, very quickly. Uh, so just be very careful with your finger angle and the type of elevation you're working with. So working my way through, one thing that you will notice is sometimes I hold my scissor different than others. Um, it really has to do with where I'm elevating the hair and what makes me feel comfortable. So when I'm higher on the head shape, I definitely go palm to palm, cut normal. And then right now you could see when I get a little bit lower with my elevation, it's more comfortable for me to shift my thumb into the other side of the scissor um, to give it just a little bit different hold on the scissor to make the angle that I'm cutting the hair more comfortable for me. So now look at my finger angle and what you'll notice what I just did was I recombed and shifted my hand up because I was starting to feel like I was building too much weight around that corner. So it's just in mid haircut, you can make those shifts. I think a lot of people just feel like they need to stick with their guide exactly the way it is, but sometimes that guide needs to shift and change. So now I've kind of created another guide to work down the side panel of the head, um, which is much lighter and won't have as low of elevation, so I won't be building up too much weight around that parietal ridge area. Now I'm just gonna go through with the tip of the scissor. This is actually a really good view of how skinny that scissor blade is. Uh, the Pen Slim, if you like a lightweight scissor that's super powerful, this is the best scissor that you can get because it just, it's, it barely can feel it in your hand, but it's got the nano powder metal so it grips the hair just like the DB20 scissor that I love so much. So now once I got that side cut, um, pretty much at the length that I want, I do a little scissor over comb just to um, kind of tighten the side in a little bit. So now we're going to work on the opposite side. What you'll notice is my finger angle changes. Now I'm pointing my fingers down. Um, key thing in this is to make sure that you keep that same elevation. Some people do this a little bit differently. Some people will do a kind of a back combing feel to it. I think that this is the most uh, simple way for me to stay consistent in a haircut, but I definitely have to make sure that my elbow doesn't drop and I don't uh, build more weight than I want to because naturally when your elbow's up in the air, it wants to fall down. So I'm going to work my way through the back, still continuing that traveling guide. Um, everything is very symmetrical to the opposite side, um, but I'm just working through, cleaning up, keep, keeping those seamless layers happening. Um, and the other thing I want you to notice is how cleanly I'm combing. Um, you might not see me have to clip the hair away when I'm cutting straight hair, but when I'm cutting curly hair, I like to take my parting, clip the hair away to keep it nice and clean because the one thing about curly hair is it can get a little confusing um, where your guide is. Your guide's not as strong coming through the hair. And also, um, you can get kind of lost if you get tangled up in the rest of the hair. So just make sure that you take your clean section, clip it all away, uh, and you'll be good to go. I use a YS Park clip. Um, they have a lot of tension to them. And also those little holes on the clip help grip the hair, which is really nice. Um, it's a lot better than some of those plastic clips out there or the butterfly clip, things like that. It just holds the hair nice and tight, clean to the head. Um, it allows you to work a lot easier. So now in the back, this is that triangle section. We're going to continue that vertical feel, uh, continue the clean sectioning, clipping the hair away. Um, the one thing that we're going to change up in this triangular section, and this is what I talk about, taking each panel and doing things different with it the, to create the outcome that you're looking for. This one is a stationary guide, so everything's going to come to the center back. Um, I'm just going to keep taking vertical sections around that corner, over directing them back to me. What that's going to do is pop a little extra weight uh, into the corners of the head so that this isn't a fully round shaped haircut. Um, that wasn't my goal. I wanted that kind of corner feel to it um, to build up a little more, more shape, be a little more flattering on her head shape. So you can see that um, I overdirect the hair, and I, we'll get another view of it here uh, on the opposite side, overdirecting everything to the center back of the head shape. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing the weight right behind the ear, just uh, slightly behind the ear, and then when I get that weight there, then I go in with the tease cutting technique and just soften it a little bit. So um, just 
over directing all the way over, pushing that extra weight. I'm gonna show you a good angle of it here. You can see that extra weight, a little bit of tease cutting just softens the edge, but still keeps that shape in there. So that's a cool little tip uh, when you're working with curly hair around a corner. Um, now, over directing everything back to me. We're starting over the crown. Um, this is not gonna be a stationary guide, but we're gonna start it off over directing it back because what I wanna do is have that extra weight um, in the crown. I also don't wanna round that off too much have a little bit of a, uh, a bulkier shape in the back. Then I split everything down the center and I cut more of a triangular top. So if you think about, we're cutting short down by the ear, so longer in the center. The center is gonna be the longest point. That's what gives it that faux hawk feel um, that we're looking for in the outcome of this haircut. Notice where my finger was when I took my first section and cut, and now I've moved a little bit further up on the head. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Every section that I take is gonna come back to the previous. So I will be building building up weight towards the front, but I don't want to over direct everything all the way back in this particular haircut because I'm not looking to have that much length in the very, very front of the cut. So as we move into the front, the big thing that's going to change here is I'm going to over direct this a little bit further back because what I wanted to do is push that extra length into the front uh, for later on so we can go in and really customize it. So it's just giving me that little bit of extra length, but you can see the angle that I've been cutting the whole time. That's the finger angle that I've been using. So you can see how it gets longer in the very center. That's what gives it the faux hawk feel. So if you're trying to cut a faux hawk on straight hair as well, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna cut more of a triangular feel to your finger angle and preserve that length in the center. So what you'll notice I'm cutting palm to palm. The reason I chose to go palm to palm instead of cutting on top of my fingers is because palm to palm allows me to get tighter towards the bottom of my finger, towards the ear. That's where the hair is closest. If I were to cut on top of my finger, my palm and my fingers kind of get in the way. Um, if it was on the opposite side, it'd be fine. But because I'm cutting on this side of the head, I don't want my palm in the way or the back of my hand the, the bottom of my hand in the way of me getting close and tight to the head to keep it as consistent as possible. So it's a little trick for you guys as well. Just tilt the guest head towards you a little bit and you can cut palm to palm on the side. So finishing up, same thing. Uh, we're gonna add a little bit of bricado mousse to the hairstyle. We're gonna diffuse this um, nice and curly, keeping obviously the natural curl to it. Um, but what I wanted to do was diffuse it. Then we're going to go in and do a little bit of dry cutting uh, techniques over top. So we're using the Dyson blow dryer with the diffuser. Um, <laughs> I'm really loving this blow dryer. This is not a paid thing whatsoever from Dyson. Um, I don't I don't think they're giving anybody money at this point. Uh, they're just selling really expensive dryers, but I really do love uh, this blow dryer. Um, using it constantly in the salon, it dries the hair super fast. This video is sped up two times faster than it normally would be, um, which isn't a lot. It's like the smallest amount of spe uh, being sped up, but the hair is actually drying. Like it, it's pretty much dry. When I take it off of the section, it's dry. Uh, so it does speed up your drying time quite a bit. So now the important part, getting into uh, a little just freehand scissor work. This is the thing that I really love about curly hair as well, is that I can go in freehand. I've got my seven inch Mizutani solid uh, scissor and I'm just going in freehand. I'll mess up the hair a little bit, but what I'm doing is, is just grooming the shape. So let's go over a couple things with this technique. So first off, you want to make sure that you have practiced and can just move that one steady blade before you start working on this technique because you want to be nice and consistent as you pass over the head. Also, I'm not taking off a lot of hair. All I'm doing is just softening the corners of the shape that I created to get the finished look that I wanted. So I go through Scissor over, it's just like scissor over comb, but no comb, uh, because if you run a comb in curly hair, sometimes it doesn't work that well. As you can see, I'm fighting through that. And then now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna point cut through the top portion of this haircut just to shorten the length in the front. You don't really know we overdirected it back and I pushed that weight forward so that later on now I can go through and see what that length's really gonna look like in the end result and um, and I can cut it more if I want to. So now we're gonna go through just cleaning up the edges of the haircut, a little scissor over comb work, again using that seven inch blacksmith fit uh, solid scissor and 
that is the end result. We're gonna do a little bit of hairspray, style it up. If you guys have any questions, post them in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed the cut. All right guys, if you liked this video and you like this haircut, then hit the like button, hit the share button, share this video with all of your friends. And also remember, if you're looking for new tools, go to freesaloneducation.com. We got tons of deals going on. Mizutani scissors, YS Park combs, ergo brushes, carving combs, all kinds of tools on there. Uh, at great prices, so go check it out. Thank you guys always for the support. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and I will see you guys on the next video. Thanks. And guys, remember, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button below because you could win this Vibrastrate iron. Good luck. Let me know in the comments below if you've subscribed. Thanks.